congratulations on the secret, secret art of human flight uh, premiering at Tribeca. Thank you. Um, tell us, why don't you set up the premise of it? It's a little bit of an unusual film. Um, talk a little bit about the premise and sort of set it up for the audience. So it is unusual. Yeah, um, it's sort of a, I, I would call it a, uh, a comedy drama dealing with grief that also incorporates elements of fantasy and magical realism. Um, and it follows my character, uh, Ben Grady, who is a recent widower. Um, and, uh, he's dealing with his grief, uh, and, you know, much like anybody dealing with grief, you, you gravitate towards all kinds of strange things, uh, to move through the process. And, um, this particular guy ends up on the dark web where he comes across a self-help book written by a guru who calls himself Mealworm, uh, uh, who's played by uh, Academy Award nominee Paul Racy, the amazing Paul Racy. Um, and uh, he begins to, through a bizarre series of steps, help me unlock the power to fly like a bird or Superman, um, or so he claims to. There's a very good chance that he, he uh, could be a con artist. Um, and the director, H.P. Mendoza, does a lot of like experimental stuff and a lot of very out there uh, films. So there's always this question of uh what exactly is our grip on reality um but it's also a very beautiful and moving story about grief hope connection um ultimately hope and that's kind of what i gravitated towards yeah how do you connect to a character like this that's you know for, first tell me a little bit about how you connect to it and then how do you hit all of these different notes in a movie because it, it's your you're going through a lot of different things that are very different and not necessarily typical in a, in one movie. So, yeah, well, you hire the right director, <laughs> <laughs> which in our case was, uh, was HP. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, uh, I also produced the film. So, so I found the script, uh, and, um, I, I really, when the script came to me, it was sort of at the beginning of COVID um, and we were reaching the height of the pandemic. And I, I felt that a lot of people, not just myself, I felt like a lot of people could relate to the grief and the loss and the destabilization uh, of the tragedy. You know, we all sort of went through a collective tragedy as, as a, as a world. Um, and it just felt like, uh, it just felt like the kind of story that everybody could relate to. And we just premiered last night and I, I did feel like it really resonated with people. It did feel like, I, I think people connected to it more than they thought they would given the, like, you know, as you put it, all the different, uh, all the different like genres and, and realms that it, that it tries to match into one movie. Um, but it, it, it felt like it landed somehow. I hope we don't know. We don't know. We have a couple of reviews. We don't know. I'm not nervous. You're nervous. <laughs> so talk about what's the way in for you as an actor with this character? What um, what helped you to relate to him and what he's going through? Um, just really my own experiences with loss. Um, and yeah, I think anybody who goes through loss can can access this character, this kind of character. Um, but also, he's a creative. You know, the the, the character I play uh, is a he's a children's book author, uh, and I'm a writer myself, and I'm a I'm, I'm an actor, and I'm you know so so anybody creative. Um, oh, and also uh, the it's sort of it's interesting the the guy who wrote the script Jesse Orenshine is uh, not just a screenwriter, but he is himself a children's book author um and when we were first talking about it he told me that uh he sort of wrote it right after he married his wife um and in reading it i realized that and i kind of pitched to him i was like is this sort of like your worst nightmare did you sort of write your worst nightmare uh nightmare come to life and he said you know not intentionally but maybe and so maybe i was using a little bit of, of the writer as well yeah now that i think about it uh, what for you was the most interesting or most important scene to film uh, in the movie? There were a handful. 
Um, there were a handful that we knew we just absolutely had to nail. Um, there's a scene with my sister that's really powerful, played by Lucy DeVito, um, about halfway through the movie, where uh, she confronts me about this, um, this, this process that I'm undertaking, uh, and she's very concerned for me, and I basically have to say, you know, I don't care. I need this. I don't You know, it may seem crazy. It may seem insane, but like, I, it may be a sham. It may be psychotic, but I need this. Um, which is how a lot of people who sort of fall into these schemes, uh, feel, you know, they're, they're, they are lost themselves and are just looking for something, anything to, um, to serve as a life raft. Um, and so that scene was really tough to nail. And then there were a bunch with Paul Racy that, um, that we had to nail as well. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much uh, because <laughs> it, the, the joy of the movie is you really don't quite know where it's going from scene to scene. From moment to moment, you really don't know where it's going, if it's going to make you laugh. The way HP directed it, you really don't know if it's going to make you laugh or make you cry or scare you. You don't really know. Uh, so I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> Your character gets to experiment with some psychedelics. Did you get to partake? To, to do some preparation for this? Uh, oh, I'm, you know, I go full method, Eric. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we uh, to totally method. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, yeah, so to talk a little bit about your co-star and um, what it was like to work with him um, on some of these crazier scenes, like what, what, what sort of dynamic was there between the two? Oh man, Paul is amazing. He is. Um, we we offered him the part right after the uh, right after the Oscars uh, when he was up for Sound of Metal and he had just won the Independent Spirit Award. So I mean, when you when you um, when you do that, you're so like God. I hope I hope he reads it. I hope he responds to it. And then he does. And then you know, if you look at him, he's kind of an intimidating guy if you don't know him. Uh, but when you do get to know him, he's just like a big kid, you know, um, he's like my brother now, uh, his, his wife and I, and, uh, we, we go to rock concerts together. Uh, Paul's in like a, an, a, a rock band, uh, an ALS rock band, ALS, ASL, ASL rock band. Um, and, uh, so we, you know, we go, we do that. He's become a very, very, very good friend of mine. Um, but at first it was very intimidating and like the first day, we got there. I, I, you know, when you're young and you're nervous, you don't shut up. Um, and he had to sort of turn. You know, I kept being like, "Are you, you good? You good? You need anything? You good?" And, you know. And he was just sort of like, "I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm in the zone. You don't, you don't have to take care of me. I'm having a blast. Man. It's all good. Like, just shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone." <laughs> uh, but he's wonderful. I mean, every time you, uh, he's so committed. You know, he's been doing this for 40 years, and and you get in the scene with an actor. Uh, and the yell action and the cameras are on and he just comes to life. So cool. That's great. Um, Grant, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. We hope everyone gets a chance to see the film at Tribeca. Uh, Me too. Yeah. Uh, good luck with it. Thanks, Eric. Good talking. Thanks for watching the You Interview channel. With over 3,000 original celebrity videos, we have one of the largest collections of celebrity interviews anywhere. So remember to like and comment on our videos and subscribe to the channel. If you want to get more involved, you can become a member of the channel. Membership has its perks. You can see exclusive celebrity videos and get the opportunity to ask our celebrity guests questions. We can't wait to hear from you.